Hello and welcome to the pop bottle creation tutorial for Fusion 360. Uh, first thing you want to do is make sure up in the top left corner of your screen you have clicked new design uh, and your screen should look like this. Uh, what we need to do now is we need to grab a reference image for our pop bottle. So to do that, uh, in our lesson, we actually have a reference image ready to go. So this is lesson two. Uh, you can see the image you will be referencing can be downloaded here. So we click on that. Uh, it's in a Google Drive uh, folder. So let's click on that again. And this is the image we're going to be referencing right here. Uh, so what you need to do is go up to the top right corner, click on download, and it will download the image to whatever location you have it. Uh, I'm just going to write, uh, I'm just going to click that arrow, I'm going to click show in folder. My image is a lesson two pop bottle reference. And that is actually on my desktop. That's where I download most things. You can see there it is right there. Uh, okay, so what we're gonna do now is once you have your image downloaded and you know where it is located, uh, we are going to put the image into Fusion 360. So we're gonna click on insert. We're gonna click on canvas. Uh, and then we need to click on this little icon called image and we're going to make sure we are in our desktop here and I believe it was this pop bottle reference one here so I'm going to double click that and it's asking me what face do you want to place it on and I'm going to place it on the ZX axis you can see that's that one right here so there is my image right there and I can move this fly out um, little menu here wherever I want and I'm going to click on this little cube, click on the front, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see my image a little better. Um, it is backwards, so I'm going to click on horizontal flip so it is the right direction. I'm just going to make sure the canvas opacity right here is just below 50, and that should set that up uh, perfectly. So I'm just going to click OK on the bottom. You'll notice now over here a new folder has popped out. It is our canvases folder, which we just created. And if you open that up, you'll see there is our actual pop bottle PNG file. Uh, so I'm going to right click that and I'm going to click on this calibrate button right here because I want to make the pop bottle the same size as a pop bottle in real life. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the pop bottle. Let's say like right about here. I'm going to go up to the top of the pop bottle. Let's say about there. And I'm going to type in 170, 170 millimeters. And that will make the pop bottle 170 millimeters tall. Um, you want to make sure under document settings here, if I click that down, we are in millimeters and you can change that clicking this little edit icon right here. Okay. So that should be ready to go. We now need to sketch out our pop bottle. So what we're going to do is, uh, on these, these little icons here, we're going to click on the create sketch button and we're going to just make sure we are on the front face right here. I'm going to click that once. And now I'm going to click on the line tool, which is this tool right here. You can also click L on your keyboard. I'm just going to zoom in, try and get in the center there. And then I'm just going to zoom out a little more and go right down to the bottom and click on the bottom of my pop bottle. So that purple line appears. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer here. I'm going to make sure I'm kind of lined up with the side of the pop bottle here. And I'm just going to click once. And then I'm going to bring this line up to about where the pop bottle curves in. So right about there. And then I'm just going to click that little green check mark. I have the basic, the beginning of my pop bottle sketch. Um, now what I need to do is I need to sketch out these curves here. And to do that, we are going to be using what's called a spline tool. <clears throat> now there's the fit point spline here. We are not going to be using the fit point spline. Click on the create tab, go down to spline right here. And we're going to be using the control point spline because it's a little bit easier to use. So click that once and make sure you go down and hover over your circle. And we're going to keep clicking here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit actually. And you're just going to follow the curvature of the bottle that you have and kind of keep, just keep clicking. And wherever it starts to curve, just pull your, um, your cursor up and I'm just going to go around here a little bit, clicking a little bit more so I get a bit more detail. And right at the top, I'm just going to go straight up and I'm going to click once and I'm going to pull over here and I'm click on that little green check mark, which will finish off my, uh, finish off my spline. So I'm going to click on select up here and you'll notice here, these little black dots, I can actually maneuver these black dots and pull them out or in and change the curvature 
of my spline. You can see the purple line changes according to um, whether I pu push or pull on that little black line, that little black dot there. So you can you can follow that all the way down to your where it connects here. So that looks pretty good. Um, not bad. Now at the top, we've got a bit of an issue. We need to close our sketch. So we need these two lines connected here and here. So I'm going to go back up to my line tool or click L on my keyboard. Click that once and hover over my white circle. Click it once and I'm going to go over to this other white circle and I'm going to click again. This now, you'll notice that um, it's gone this kind of orange, uh, see-through orange color. And that means our sketch is now closed. So I'm going to click on select. And I've got a bit of a problem here. This line is not straight right here, and I want this line straight. So I'm going to put a constraint on that line to make it straight. So if you look up here, this is all our constraints in red right here. You can click the fly down and see other options. Uh, we're going to use the horizontal vertical constraint because we want to make this line right here horizontal. So all I need to do is hover over it. It turns purple or blue and click once, and there we go. Now it is horizontal. Perfect. So that you can see the little constraint. Um, icon appears above it there. Okay, so we're looking pretty good here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more so you can see my pop bottle. Now we want to revolve this uh, sketch around. So what we're going to do is we're going to click back on solid on the top and you can see there is our revolve tool right here. If I click on create, you can see there are a lot of different tools we can use, but we are going to be using the revolve tool. So first thing it says, uh, what profile do you want to use? And it actually automatically selects the profile, which is this one right here. If I click it again, um, you can just click back on it and it's one select, it selects the profile. Um, the axis, we want it to run down the center axis or the Z axis. So I click that and you can see it actually, if we kind of rotate here, you can see it's created um, our pop bottle. Uh, so you leave everything else the same and notice where it says new body here. When I watch when watch when I click OK, what happens over on the side here? So I'm just gonna move this away. Click OK and suddenly a new body appears because you just created a new body. So I'm gonna click down here and I am going to double click on the body. I'm just gonna call it bottle. I like to name the body so I know what they are. And I'm just going to collapse that. Okay, uh, pretty good. It's still a little strange looking. We don't want this reference image in the middle anymore. So under canvas, I'm just going to click the eyeball and that will remove our reference image. Uh, also, I think I'm going to fill it the bottom at the bottom and the top a little bit to make them more rounded. They're a bit flat. So I'm going to zoom in. Here's the fillet tool right here. So I'm going to click that once and we click on the bottom um, and you can see it says one edge and ask you how much do I want to do a fillet. So I'm going to go seven millimeters for this one. Seems reasonable. And then I'm going to click plus and go up to the top, kind of rotate here and zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to click this little, the black edge here. And it's asking how much do I want to fill it that by. I'm going to go two mils. So seven and two, and we have the top and the bottom ready to go. And I'm just going to click, everything else can remain the same. Click OK. And that should give me a fillet on the top and the bottom. Okay, perfect. Um, we've got a couple more things we need to think about. This is a solid model straight through which is no good. We want a hollow model um, because it's a pop bottle. So what we want to do is, I'm just going to show you what I mean. If I click on inspect and I go down to where it says section analysis and I click that once and it says, what face would you like to cut with? Uh, I'm just going to choose the, again, the ZX face, which is this one right here. And you can pull, you can pull through and you can see this is a solid model. It is not hollow at all. So I'm going to cancel that um, and I want to hollow out this model. So what I'm going to do is under the modify menu, there is this thing called shell. I'm going to click shell and it says select the faces and bodies. So I'm just going to highlight the entire thing. Actually, I hope I got everything there. I think I did. Oh, got rid of it. There we go. And I'm going to hollow it out by 1.5 millimeters inside. Okay. So I'm going to click OK and it doesn't look like it did anything, but if we go back to inspect, and click on section analysis, select the same face, the ZX face. You can see it in fact hollowed out our bottle, which is great. Okay, I'm just gonna click okay, and that will leave the section analysis over here if I ever wanna use it again. Um, and we still have a problem, our bottle is not open on the top right here. So what you wanna do is click on this top face right here, and we're gonna use the extrude function, which is right here, or you can click E on your keyboard. So I'm going to click that once, and all I need to do here is pull down, just pull down 
I went minus 11, so we can go whatever. And this cut, this will change to cut because it is cutting away the face. Uh, and just click OK. And you can see that cuts away our hole uh, for our pop bottle. Um, now that is looking pretty good so far. I would say what I'll, what we also could do is if I highlight the entire piece right here and I right click it, um, there's this appearance uh, little uh, menu option. So this appearance uh, menu flyout appears. I click the plus. I'm just going to collapse appear to and I'm going to collapse in this design. And you can see here's the library. I think I already have um, the glass highlighted, but I could type in glass here in the library just to search. And you see have different types of glass. So I'm just going to choose a blue, uh, heavy blue glass, I guess. Try that. Just pull it and drag it and release. And this will add a glass appearance to your model, which is kind of cool. Um, if you wanted to seat your model on the ground, you could go down to display settings under Envi... Uh, where is it? Um, effects. So it's environment dome, a ground plane. Um, and you click OK. You can see it starts to add some other effects onto our model. So I can do a ground shadow, a ground reflection, and an object shadow. So you can see this starts to change it a little bit. Okay, uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Don't forget to save your model uh, when you have completed it.